this is my second to last vlog before Christmas and my last vlog at university uh, this year I think and because time's short and because I have a lot of work to do with other projects and with posters going up and with the last little essays and things to submit I'm going to be vlogging and reading molecular genetics simultaneously because it seems like the best use of my time so this week while he reads away I'm going to be talking about symbiosis there's a species of squid and it sort of teams up with um, fluorescent bacteria and the fluorescent bacteria benefit from they're protected by the squid because they live within the squid and they produce light and that allows at night time anyway it allows the squid to pretend to be moonlight and as the squid pretends to be moonlight it can sort of drop down on unsuspecting prey and engulf them which I think is beautiful really. Sea anemones um, are well, contrary to popular belief, they're not plants, they are animals, they're um, marine predatory animals, and they team up with clownfish and other ray-finned fish like that. Um, and the benefit is the sea anemone um, sort of produces this predator-free environment, I guess you'd say, for the ray-finned fish, things like clownfish, things like that. And the clownfish uh, keep other predators away from the sea anemone so they both sort of act to um, keep each other safe from each other's predators and the reason that sea anemones sting um, other fish and other predators is they have things called ne nematocysts nematocysts imagine like a spearhead a spearhead sort of on a tendril and when something touches these these nematocysts are fired into the um, skin and the tissues and the membranes of the predator and then they start to secrete toxins and neurotoxins and all sorts of nasty chemicals uh, Clownfish and things are covered in a mucus that prevents these nematocysts from firing, which is why they don't get stung. And if you watch Finding Nemo, uh, this is why uh, Merlin doesn't get stung. Is he called? I think he's called Merlin, he should be. Uh, it's why he doesn't get stung. He's got more of him. He's got one of them. But anyway, the point is he's not stung because he's covered in this mucus when um, him and Dory sort of travel through the big uh, field of jellyfish. Because jellyfish also work by firing nematocysts and obviously they can't fire into the mucus because they aren't triggered by it. I'm not sure if you would call this one, this is going back underwater again, I'm not sure if you call this one a symbiosis, I suppose it's more, it's not parasitic because, oh, it's difficult to explain, but um, the species of sea slugs that eat um, chlorophyte algae, chlorophyte algae, little green things float around in water, tiny things, and there's a species of sea slug that eat these, but then the chloroplasts, the things that photosynthesize in the algae, continue to live within the sea slug and continue to photosynthesize so the sea slug sort of photosynthesizes using these chloroplasts and gains sugars from them but it would only be a symbiosis if it also helped the chlorophyte algae but I can't see any benefit of the chlorophyte algae essentially just being eaten so it's sort of um, a biological grey area I guess so yeah that is symbiosis in a nutshell really uh, where two living organisms be it fungus, plant, animal, whatever uh, help each other to develop and progress and all the rest of it. Next week, if I have time and if I've got plenty of reading done, I'll probably talk about parasites as well, which is, it's sort of like a symbiotic relationship in as much as there are two species, or maybe more species, but instead of um, sort of aiding and assisting both partners, only one is benefited. Uh, so examples like uh, vampire bats, uh, mosquitoes, um, Venus fly traps and things like that. Anyway, I'm going to go back to doing tons and tons of work and I'll see you all on Saturday, hopefully. So yeah, bye.